I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I want to share with you one of the greatest enemies I had in my life that I needed to conquer. And that enemy was anger. Anger is only one letter less than danger. If you put D in front of anger, it will turn to danger. The Bible says that anger inhabits the powers of fools. The Bible says that a wise man controls his temper. So the inability to control your temper is a sign of foolishness. Because one sign of foolishness is that you are unnecessarily angry. And I could be said to be intelligent, I could be said to be brilliant and anointed, but I had a problem. Anger. Anger is necessary for you sometimes to be able to receive respect, value, and to set boundaries. When Jesus went into the temple, when he saw people trading in the temple, he made a whip and flogged them and told them, upturned their tables and said, this place is supposed to be a house of prayer, but not a den of thieves. So, because people were exploiting visitors that came for the festival from other countries, they were extorting them. Sometimes you need to be angry with what makes you unproductive. You have to be angry with circumstances that are not what you anticipated. Most people who are very successful, who are very dynamic, secrete a lot of testosterone, adrenaline, and no adrenaline, and this home and cortisol, and these hormones can prepare you for fight or for flight. If you fail an exam, you need to be angry with yourself to be able to pass that exam. If you come from a poor family like mine, you need to be angry with poverty to be able to leave poverty. The reason most African countries have remained underdeveloped is that our leaders are not angry with the way they are treated, the way they are discriminated, the way our people are even discriminated against by fellow Africans because of our color. The Arab people treat us, Arab people in Africa like Egyptians, Tunisians, Algerians, they treat those of us from Sub-Saharan Sub -Sub -Saharan Africa and East Africa as less Africans than them. And so you need to be angry when you are oppressed, maltreated, deprived of your rights. But in the expression of your anger, you must not be destructive and disruptive necessarily. So, anger is different from rage. Rage is an, is an eruptive, uncontrolled anger that is illogical. Sometimes when you get angry, you burn bridges, you destroy relationships, you destroy property, and you can harm yourself and harm others. When the Bible says anger uh, dwells in the bowel of fools, that a fool builds a camp for anger in his heart. I have a young man that works with me. He can get angry over things that do not concern him. Very minor, one day he came to the farm and the maize we planted were plucked by people. And he got angry and refused to walk. Who are you harming? When you secrete cortisol, adrenaline, no adrenaline, 
The resultant effect is that you can have cramps in your bowel, your blood pressure can go up, you can have eczema, and you can have hypertension. I was reviewing the cause of death of a man called Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels was a very brilliant man who was um, very popular on social media and was dealing with issues of masculinity, feminism, and um, breakdown of social values. Number one, he divorced twice. So if you have temper problem, you can't sustain relationships. Your marriages will break. Your relationships with people will break. And anger, because of the secretion of adrenaline, no adrenaline, and cortisol, and the contraction of your blood vessels can lead to hypertension. Anger will prevent you from sleeping well. Anger will lead to anxiety and lead to depression. And so, uh, some years eventually died in a hotel. He, he was rushed from a hotel to the clinic and he eventually died. It was believed that he died as a result of hypertension. So, he, you could see the anger, even though he was calm, but the anger resided in his bosom. You could see the anger with which he dealt with some women. And some of the titles in his video will say, uh, Kevin Samuel destroys a woman of 47. That vengeance spirit, that aggressive spirit, led to the hypertension. I grew up in a dysfunctional home where father and mother fought and police used to come. I grew up in a system that was very intolerant of misbehavior and anger was expressed freely on those who did not meet their expectations. And so I grew up hearing stories of my grandfather, the way he was very harsh, and uh, one way or the other, either by genetics or by uh, parental and societal influence, I grew up with this, this tendency to be very harsh and angry. But you see, I found out that it was affecting my marriage, affecting my relationship with people. I nearly lost one of the golden opportunities that God gave to me because of anger. Somebody called from a city in Lagos and uh, he was saying something that was false. And I hate wrong accusations, false accusations. And my PA was holding the phone and I was hearing what they were saying. And I wanted to respond in my natural and usual self. But my PA, why, being wiser than I was, went away with the telephone and I didn't hear what they discussed. But that singular act of my personal assistant saved me nearly 40 million naira. Saved me a very prof beneficial relationship. And so, when you get angry unnecessarily, you will truncate your relationship with people who might offend you today, but later realize that they were wrong and become beneficial to you in future. One of the things I learned from my wife is not to burn bridges. Even she can disagree with you and be offended by what you have done. She has a way of reconciling and keeping relationship with you, even though some of them have burnt her fingers. So, why do people uh, get angry? Most with people and display rage. Most of such people are narcissists. They see themselves as the primary reason for human existence. And if they can't get what they want, they must react aggressively in a bid to prove their point and maybe to intimidate the other person. People with rage and violent anger. A pastor recently was, I was reading on social media, shot at his wife. 
and the wife had reported domestic violence. You see, and today he is in custody. He's going to lose his ministry, lose his reputation, lose his wife, and lose several things. Anger will make you lose a lot. Most people who suffer from this anger issue, they have low self-esteem. They will always have a halo, a halo effect by interpreting what others do to them from their inferiority complex or their low perception of themselves. You see, when you are confident about yourself, when people misbehave around you, you see them from their point of deficiency, not necessarily from their underestimation of who you are. There are times you need to be angry about misbehavior, mismanagement, attempts to destroy your institution. But when it becomes rage, when it becomes uncontrollable, when it becomes unreasonable, when it is no longer being able to be pacified, oh, it's enough, cool down. When it leads to destruction, injury, and maybe murder or death, then it is a problem that needs to be mitigated, that needs to be ameliorated. I have lost a lot through poor understanding of how to express my disagreement. In my first five years of marriage, it was quite turbulent, quite unpleasant, just like what I experienced from my father and my mother, until I started applying these Bible passages to myself. If I am Dr. Apoki, and I consider myself to be wise, I don't need to vent my anger. A white man controls his temper. So I learned to control my, react, my response to offensive behavior. So a wise man controls his temper. You can respond but not react. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. So if somebody behaves stupidly and you react stupidly, you are equal and opposite. If a madman comes to collect your clothes and then you run after the madman naked because you are infuriated, when somebody sees you, he won't know who is really mad out of two of you. So you must learn to control your temper. And you must learn to avoid issues that trigger your anger. The Bible says, in Romans chapter 16, 17 to 18, it says, avoid them that cause offense and division amongst you. That is to say, if an environment is offensive, if an environment will cause anger, if an environment will cause a disruption of your emotions, if a person, an activity will make you get angry, avoid it. At one point, because I need to be sincere with you, I need to be uh, truthful with you, I need to be plain with you. I am not a superstar. That's what one thing I promise God, that I will be as truthful as possible with those I mentor, those I relate with. At one point in my marriage, because I did nearly everything with my wife, we drove together, we did business together, we went to preach together, we did a lot of things together. But my concepts were totally different from our concepts. My approach to life was totally different. My background was totally different. My aspirations were totally different from her aspiration. We could have an area of commonality in trying to build a business, build a family that was financially independent and financially free, but there were values I had based on my background and training, based on my aspirations that were not the same with hers, based on my practices and principles on how to achieve 
success. And the tendency was that we were always quarreling. Sometimes in the school, in a day, we will have up to three things that could cause divorce. You will notice that many successful people, many aggressive people, when I mean aggressive, many people who pursue their purposes, their ministry, their businesses with zest and zeal, don't have stable marriages. Then go to, I'm not sure he has a wife at home. Look at Bill Gates and Melinda, they separated. Check out people like uh, Davido, um, two, two Face Edibia, many sportsmen and women. And you will find out that a lot of them have unstable marriages. It is because this drive to make a mark, this drive to achieve success, also secret the same hormones that will lead to anger, testosterone, uh, no adrenaline, adrenaline, and cortisol. And you will see that anger will affect your health. So what I did was that I tried to find an area of commonality, commonality, functionality, and similarity of desires and purposes where I could function with my wife. And I avoided those areas that could cause conflict, that could cause pain and anger. And then I have had peace of mind. She has a peace of mind. The marriage is better. The marriage is more stable for the past 38 years. There's a problem that we pastors preach you into. You don't need to wear the same clothes with your wife. You don't need to have a quiet time and morning devotion with her. You can have these things separately, come together when necessary, when comfortable, and share ideas that would mutually edify two of you. But you, might, you must not do it in the same time, in the same um, uh, situation. My wife wakes up very early. Early morning sleep is my greatest therapy. So she can wake up very early, wants us to pray. Me, I'm not ready to pray at that time. I sleep very late, and she sleeps very early. So if I have to fold her and mold her to fit my schedule, or she has to do that with me, in the process, we will destroy each other and destroy the relationship. So I learned how to be married and single. I learned how to avoid what will cause offense between two of us. I know that when she comes, she will walk through the staircase, she will pull her shoes down, and she will not want to feel sand on this staircase as she's coming up. So I make sure that I sweep this place, or if any person comes with sand upstairs, that sand must be removed. I don't want her to come back from the school and start washing plates. So I try as much as possible that the place we have used to eat, or I have used to eat, before she comes back, they are clean. I don't use her toilet. Each room in this building, there are eight rooms here, has its own toilet inside, and then we have two public toilets. So I don't use her toilet. I use mine because I don't know what will offend her in her toilet. You see, if you are not a narcissist, you must learn to respect people. You must learn to respect and understand people. Sometimes when people fail you or fall below expectation, try to understand them. It could have been you if you were brought up the way they were brought up and if you pass through the situations that they are passing through. So learn to walk away sometimes. I try to avoid some people. I try to avoid circumstances because I am not a normal person and I don't reason normally and my brain is not too normal. I don't go to meetings. I don't attend meetings. I hardly ever attend meetings. And so I said my wife goes and attends meetings on my behalf. Because I don't like most of the way the ways that our people in Nigeria and Africa in general behave. I don't attend ceremonies often. I rarely do. And I don't stay for long because I will start getting offended. Recently, I don't watch Nigerian news after the elections. I don't watch Nigerian news. When I watch Nigerian 
television news, I get offended. I, I don't read Nigerian newspapers. I get offended. I stopped appearing on television recently in the TV station in my city because if I go to disturb, discuss those topics, I will come back home offended. So I try to avoid circumstances that will provoke anger. I don't argue scriptures with people because my perception and understanding of scriptures can be different from their own and they want to enforce and make me swallow what they believe in. I told you in one of the videos that I, I was discussing with my son and his uh, brother, his nephew or cousin or somehow, school me, they are both orthopedic surgeons. And he was asking me my opinion about tithes. I told him that my opinion about tithes is quite different from what people believe. But I don't ask my, ask, I asked him, do you, is the phone on speaker? I said yes. Ask my son how much he has sent to me in the past months of this year. It's just 35,000 Naira. And because the 35,000 Naira, I told him, if he had money that was, will expire with the currency exchange, he should say. And um, I asked him, have I destroyed your business or sent canker worms to destroy your business because you didn't give me money? And he said, no. I said, God is more loving than me. And so if God is more loving than I am, and he, will, he cannot destroy my business, because I didn't pay him 10%. So I have read in the Bible where they said that if you don't pay your tithe, you should use it to buy strong drink and beer and drink. So my perception of those who drink beer, drink alcohol, is quite different from mainstream Christianity. But I don't condemn those who don't drink. Neither do I condemn those who drink. But I condemn those who get drunk and misbehave after drinking. That's my perception an understanding of the Bible. When we meet Jesus Christ face to face, we will understand him better by and by. So I, I don't get into religious arguments. I try to avoid arguments. What I try to do, if somebody is making a, uh, making a statement, I try to absorb that statement and analyze it with time. I might come to see his viewpoint. I don't uh, know everything, but I can ask you questions. I posted a video about the plantain soccer, the species that bears double plantain. And people are saying, no, it's just a, 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 a random occurrence. No. Have you planted those plantains before? You have a degree in crop science. Do you understand crop genetics? I have them there. And they produce two all the time, most times. There are times they don't produce two when the, uh, the soil is not uh, very, very rich in nutrients. And it says that the, the, the bunches will be smaller than normal bunches. No. There are times we have to use sticks to, prompt, to prop up the plantain stem. Plantain is a flower. The stem is leaves that are arranged around each other. The bottom is a tuber, just like cocoa. And so when the double soccer species is coming up, it divides into two and it bears two uh, bunches. So I, I, I try to ask you questions. Have you planted them? Do you understand twinning? Do you understand crop genetics? If you have not, don't make categorical statements about what you don't have, empirical scientific evidence. I will put that across to you. And if you like, argue with yourself. So, I did a video on why do you hate Igbos in Nigeria. In the tribal divide, people started talking all kinds of stuff. I have never answered any person, but results are showing that I was right. Results are showing that you cannot destroy your part of the country because you are angry with the federal government. The federal government has nothing to lose. It is your people that have everything to lose. So I won't comment, I won't say anything. 
because I don't want to be angry. Sometimes I don't even read the comments. I discover that very prominent people don't respond to comments when they make their posts. So avoid offense. And you too can avoid offense. If you are easily angry, you have an emotional, a psychological problem. You have lack of social intelligence. May God help you try and control your temper or go for anger management. I suffered a lot of consequences because of that, and I'm learning gradually. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles uh, Pokey. Subscribe to this channel, share this video with others, they need it, and then go to my ebook shop, petrapublications.com, and you can join my Facebook, I mean my WhatsApp mentoring group by sending your number and a request to plus two three four seven zero five two one three six seven six three. God bless you. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Uh,